Hey boys and girls of Team Kelly, this is Lesson 7.7, .7, Multi-Step Division Number Stories. Go ahead and get that written in your notebook, and when you're done, come on back. Okay, so the math message. Emily and her two brothers owned a lemonade stand. On a hot Saturday, they sold $171 worth of lemonade in five hours. They needed $36 to pay for their supplies. If they split the remaining money evenly, how much money did Emily make per hour? All right, so there's lots of steps there. You need to take it um, systematically, try and solve it. When you think you have the answer, come back and check and see um, the strategy that I'm going to recommend that you might use. Okay, so here's one way you could have solved this complicated multi-step division problem. You could have said, step one, I'm going to take the $171 worth and subtract the $36 that they paid for supplies. If you did that subtraction, you're going to see you have $135 left. Then you could have taken the $135, divided it by five, because they work for five hours, and that gives you $27. You can see here I did partial quotients in order to solve that. And I did 5 times 2 is 10, so 5 times 20 is 100, <clears throat> excuse me. And then I subtracted, and I know my multiplication facts, 5 times 7 is 35, which then gives me 0. The answer is 27. Then I'm going to divide the 27 by the 3 people, Emily and her 2 brothers. That gives me 3 people. If I do that, simple math fact, it gives me 9. So how much did Emily make per hour? $9 each hour. Okay, so if you can follow along those steps, let's see if you could also do a formula that would go along with that. So remember we were talking about PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Um, so keep that in mind because that's going to help us to know if I'm writing out my formula, what steps I'm going to need to do first, which is why I'm putting the parentheses where I have them. So the P is parentheses, right? We don't have any exponents. We don't have any multiplication, we do have division, um, and we have subtraction. So if I want to go in the right order, I had to do the 171 minus 36. Well, if I didn't put these parentheses around this, I wouldn't be doing that first, right? Because subtraction's way at the end. So I had to put these parentheses here. And after I get that answer, I'm dividing. So I have to put parentheses around this whole problem, the 171 minus 36, the answer of that, divided by 5 is what I said I wanted to do, right? That's where this second set of parentheses is coming from. And then I'm going to divide that whole thing by 3. That's going to give me my pay per hour. So that's the way I wrote that formula, keeping this in mind. You're going to get a chance to do that on another problem, okay? Here we go. So, on this one, Mrs. Smith owns a costume shop. Varsity Blues asks her to order two kinds of hats. Top hats and bowler hats for an upcoming performance. She placed two orders for top hats, which cost her $132. Three top hats came in each of those orders. She placed two orders for bowler hats which cost $160, five bowler hats came in each order. Now each actor is going to pay for his or her own hat. How can Mrs. Smith figure out how much to charge each person? And then which hat costs more? And how much more? So you've got several questions you're going to try and figure out the answers to there. I want you to pause the video, solve this in your notebook. When you think you have the answer, come on back. All right. Here we go. Here's what I'm saying. Now, you don't have to follow my exact steps. You may have come up with a, a different way, but let's walk through this one. So, in this strategy, I made myself a little chart here because I thought that way I could organize my information and have it make sense to me. My hat type, types, the top hat, it was the price for two orders, it said was $132. There were three hats in each of those orders, so I'm trying to figure out my price per hat. Same thing here at the bowler hat, $160, two orders, five in each one, I'm trying to figure that out. So to figure this out, I know my total, and I know one of my pieces, it's clearly going to be a division problem, right? 
That's what I did here. 132, I divided it by 2 because there's two orders. And I did 2 times 6 is 12, so 2 times 60 is 120. Subtracted, giving me 12. I know 2 times 6 is 12. Therefore, $66 for each of the orders. But there were three hats in each of those orders, so I'm going to divide the 66 by 3. That's, I know 3 times 2 is 6. That made it 3 times 22 is 66. So $22 per hat for the top hats. I did the same kind of concept for the um, bowler hats. You can see here I did $160, we said, for the two orders. So if I divide that, I know 2 times 8 is 16. So 2 times 80 is 160. But there were five hats in each of those orders. So 80 divided by 5, 5 times 10, 50, subtracted that, gives me 30, 5 times 6 is 30, so 16 is the amount that it's going to cost me per hat, so I wrote that down for you over here, 22 for the top hat, 16 for the bowler, still haven't answered the which hat costs more and how much more, so I'll subtract there give me six. So the top hat is six dollars more. I've answered all of my questions. Again, could I do a formula for solving that? Pretty certain I could. Hopefully you were able to follow along with that as well. <clears throat> so here's what I did. I did, I'm still thinking of PEMDAS, right? So I'm going to use some parentheses because I have to do one thing before another. So 132 divided by 2 then I divided that by 3, and I subtracted from that the $160 divided by 2 for the two orders, divided that by 5, and the difference is what I'm going to end up with when I do that problem. Okay, I know these are lots of steps. They're complicated multi-step problems, but you know how to do each step, so just slow your thinking down and give it a go. You're going to get to practice in your math journal on page 245 and 246. There's only four problems there, but they're going to take you a little bit of time. Please do your best. There are questions, too, about what you're going to do with your remainders. So think back to unit four or five where we were figuring out what to do with remainders of division problems and really think through what you would do in each of those situations, okay? When you think you have those pages done to the best of your ability, come back and check the answers. Make sure you circle problems that you got wrong and make your corrections in pen. So when we're trying to talk about it a whole class tomorrow or Monday, um, you will be able to show me what it is you need some more help on. All right, here come those answers. So pause the video until you're ready. And there are the answers. Okay, looking forward to talking to you in class about this. Have a great weekend.